But Adam, let's kick things off here with what's, uh, you know, it's kind of something it has been a theme here for us over the last two months, it seems like, of the podcast of Sportsbook's kind of assessing where they are and whether they need to continue on in the position that they have at least tried to take. And maybe that wasn't exactly where this all panned out as we sit here in July of 2024. Matt, we spend so much time on this podcast talking about the money-making opportunity of NFL and college football betting, right? That is the prime season for customer acquisition. It is the prime season for trying to take those customers and get more and more betting volume from them as you go along. What we don't spend as much time talking about is how much it costs to do that. Because it's not like you just turn the spigot on at the beginning of football season and everyone comes running in the door to bet with you when there's a lot of competition. And so right now, here we stand in late July as a number of companies have said, do we want to go another football season? Do we want to incur the marketing expenses? Do we want to go through this again and not know that we can really compete? This time, we're talking about Superbook. And that is interesting to me because of the brand that Superbook started with. There were very few, Matt, very few established brands mm-hmm. in sports betting that tried to make a go of this. And when I talk about sports betting, I mean sports betting in particular, not casino like MGM and Caesars, right. not DFS like DraftKings and FanDuel, but a company like Superbook where everyone knows the Westgate Superbook and before that the Hilton Superbook. And everyone knows about the Super Contest. It's one of those things that gets talked about in mainstream media and has been for a number of years. And when you go to Las Vegas, the discussion is always like, oh, where are you going to hit if you're a sports better? Superbook is generally one of your stops if you are someone who cares about sports betting, if only to see the setup that they have down there. Well, we know that first under Superbook USA and then later just under the Superbook brand, they tried to go big. They they were near double digits in states, and they never really made much of an impact. Um, the Superbook brand did not resonate outside mm-hmm. of Nevada. It, it was not marketed all that strongly. And Matt, I think there was also something that the Wire Act really did to shut them down more than other sports books. We talk all about exchanges and liquidity and the ability to work across state lines. Well, the super contest doesn't work if you have to run it in each state, right? It's not the same. You don't have the same buzz running the Tennessee Superbook Mm -hmm. super contest that you do from being in the Vegas-based one. Could they have tried to do it? Potentially. I think it would have been interesting to see if they could have done some state-based ones, but I just don't think it would have had the juice that others did. So what we got was basically an announcement on July 19th, like, hey, outside of Nevada, we're done. Like, Mm -hmm. you can come get your money. That's going to be the end of it. Uh, Superbook never cracked anything above half a percent in market share anywhere. And even that would have been on the high end for them. Took them a while to get their New Jersey licensing situation uh, squared away. They tried to compete in a number of other states and never really got any sort of attention for it. And so they will continue to be in Nevada. They'll continue to run the Super Contest in Las Vegas. I'm sure Jay Cornegay and company will still have the loyal following that they do in Las Vegas, but in terms of trying to make it farther than that across the country, they're done there. Specific to Ohio, Betfred uh, decided to pull out from there. It's the second Betfred pullout that we've seen recently. Another brand that uh, we're not really sure what the future looks like for them in the U.S. market. But Matt, it's the Superbook one that I thought was really interesting in terms of the idea that you could just take what worked in Las Vegas and transport it to the rest of the country, and that did not work. Yeah, I so having gone to a couple of different states in which Superbook was active and going in and taking a look at what they had going on there, Adam, it's kind of the deal where we've talked about what differentiates you from everybody else. And the thing is, is I think they were trying to play in both sandboxes, and I just don't think that works. Whereas you've got Circa who comes in and is just like, hey, we ain't giving you no bonuses. And we're not whatever, but we'll take your big bets and we're going to probably have a better line than everybody else out there. And that is our shtick. And that is what that is what we're doing. And that is what our brand is. And that is how we're going to get a following. And that is how we're going to get customers. Superbook, if you know, in Vegas, will take bigger bets, um, not as big as Circa, but they will take some some bigger bets. That. But Adam, 
They also wanted to play in the deposit bonus stuff. And they also wanted to play in the, in the, in the boost market. And they wanted to play in that as well, which is a little confusing, I think, to a better from a brand identity standpoint, right? It's like, well, it's a boost, but it's not as good as I can get at FanDuel and DraftKings. It's a, it's a deposit bonus, but it's not as good as I can get at MGM or get it, whatever. And so it was, I just don't know. I think that maybe they should have just come in maybe more with the Derek Stevens and, and Jeff Benson approach over there at Circa and just be like, hey, you're not going to get all the, the, the bells and whistles that you get these other places, but we'll take bigger bets. We're going to try to give you better lines. We're going to do the best we can to come in and give you some some options that maybe you don't get at other places and, and stuff like that. But I, I just, I don't think it ever really panned out. And, you know, again, right or wrong, you and I have, have talked about that approach with Circa, like the no bonus approach, the, the no boost approach, the no whatever. And is that sustainable long term? But at least they have a strategy, right? I mean, like that is that is what they're doing and that is their strategy. And that's how they're going to approach these these markets. And I don't know if Superbook really came in with an established this is what we're going to be and this is how we're going to get a, a customer base. It was kind of like ah, one toe in here and then one toe in here and then one toe in here and. As we well know, that's that's kind of tough. Well, I want to take your last point first and then get back to the idea of brand identity mm. for Superbook. Uh, you can do what Circa does if you have a very rich guy who doesn't care behind it. And that's what you have with Derek Stevens. You have a very wealthy man who wants to do it this way. Mm -hmm. And so Derek Stevens cares a lot about his sports book and how that fits into his operation and how that has begat the stadium swim experience from which we know that circa prints money from people being able to go to the day club nightclub yeah. experience centered around sports it has been a very good gateway for them but that is something that you can only do if you have ownership that is willing to ride the wave of what goes along with that if you're taking big bets and you're taking respected action you're probably not clearing huge margins month after month, or you're having a really good month and then a really bad month. And it's the sort of thing that doesn't work as well with the public markets as it does with an owner who's willing to go along with that. Now, Adam, one, 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 yeah. one quick thing I forgot to mention that I want your opinion on as well in this is you, you mentioned the super contest where that's another thing Circa did. I mean, it came in and they marketed the hell out of their contests and the things that they were doing. And it kind of made the super contest like the the second tier, right? It was like the JV, and it, and so the thing that super that, that like Superbook had became kind of like the second tier one. You know, it was like no, everyone's playing Circa Millions, everyone's think playing so? the Circa Survivor. Yeah, I mean, really, you 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 think it was second? Tier? I don't know. I don't know that that was the vibe I got that it was second tier, but I do well, you think can see Circa the numbers. I'll just put it that way. I mean, like yeah. there, there was there was there was there was thousands and thousands of less entrants. So I mean, you know, I, right? I guess but that's I why think I'm the, going. well, I think the point of that also goes along with this. Circa Survivor was its own thing too, right? Like coming in with Circa Survivor was brand new, and I think you probably saw that there is a limited pool of people who are willing to play at the dollar level that goes along with that. And I also believe if you're talking about the fact that you have to play at a certain dollar level and you're talking about thousand, two thousand dollar entries into these contests, that those betters who are willing to play at that level are probably the betters who were going to be open to the idea of going to Circa in the first place when you start playing at that level. They're kind of people who would be courted away from a place like Westgate. Now, beyond that... I think what you saw is that they didn't use Westgate, their number one asset. The, the Super Contest was their number one asset, is still their number one asset when it comes to marketing that sports book. It's the thing everybody knows. You could have gone to these other states and tried to recreate it in some way. Now, because of the Wire Act and the inability to play essentially across state lines, it would have been impossible for them to do it in a way that put that liquidity for the entire country mm -hmm. together. But when it comes to brand identity and the failure to do that and the yeah. deposit bonuses, as you talked about and so on, the folks that I talked to early on were a bit concerned about what the voices were in their ears uh, in this, on the Superbook side in terms of mm -hmm. taking the Vegas approach and were they going to use a more national approach. And you're talking about guys, Jay Cornegate, John Murray, and so on, they know how to run a book. Like yeah. You're not going to tell them anything about how to run a book, but they've never had to do the part of going to compete nationally against these brands throwing hundreds of millions of dollars 
into their marketing, into tech products that are far and away ahead of what anything Superbook or any other Nevada-based book had to offer. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, it, I hate it. I hate to see it. Obviously, we, we always preach that the more competition out there, the better. The more options for the better, the better, all of that. But it's, it's tough. It's going to be it's going to be hard. And this won't be the last one. We'll continue, you know, talking about these guys that decide that the juice isn't worth the squeeze uh, as we continue on. 